My name's William. Welcome to the Safety Third Podcast. <laughs> this is a very special episode. Have we ever had a not special episode? They're all special. They're all They're special. All They're special all very special. special. For <laughs> different and unique reasons. Every <laughs> actually, no, it's always bad reasons. It's just bad. This is actually an extra bad episode. Yeah. Uh, today's guest... <laughs> it's just terrible. Is just, just genuinely a mistake to be here for, for both <laughs> me uh, and the guests, and also for you, uh, the audience. Am I, am I gesturing at the right camera there? I have no you idea. Did. Exactly. See, now you know how we do this podcast. Are you we, vision mixing this live, or, is, or does someone actually have to go through uh, and do Normally the we do mix it live. We've That's my gesture that. for editing, by the way. That's but so. uh, the HDMI cables weren't working. Right. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> God. You plug it in, and then, and then it doesn't work, and then that one works. You switch the cables, and then that one works, and that one doesn't work. That's okay. You know, yeah. I, I, technology. It's great. <laughs> As it gets better, it somehow also gets worse. Because, so here's the thing. The moment it gets better, it can do more. And then it gets more complicated. It just, no, but it just never really gets, like, the moment it gets better, you're like, this is good. I can, I can, like, push it a little further. And then it just gets just as bad as it was before. Do you have a theory as to why things get worse the more advanced technology becomes? I think they just stay equally as bad. <laughs> Reverse forever. singularity. Here's, here's <laughs> my, I, I, guess, I guess it'd probably be better to preface with like an example, you know, of like you got phones which are more powerful. What's the meme? It's more powerful than what we landed on the moon, yeah, later, yeah. right? Uh, so then why, why do they get like really slow and stuttery? Because you can be less efficient now. You have so much more power, you don't need to optimize. Yes. I mean, you're, you're right, because like, uh, coding over the years, you, you have to optimize. Everything yeah. has to fit in yeah. 512K or less. And now it's just, yeah, you know what? We are going to, everything is an Electron app now, yeah. and you just download an entire browser for what should be like yeah. a half megabyte bit of code. Yeah. Yeah. So instead of making the applications more efficient, they just made the development more easy by making... Which is, not, which is a trade-off. It, yeah. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Right. But but it's also maybe I also, I also don't need a half terabyte of RAM to open Slack. Right. You know, so. Right. Uh, anyways, uh, we're recording directly to SD cards. <laughs> oh yeah, that was, the, that was the original question, wasn't it? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, how are you doing? How's America? How's uh, I mean, those are two very different questions. <laughs> let's let's focus on the first one okay. today. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm doing okay. It's it's uh, I am a constant ball of stress with yeah. with everything but um you're I'm, posting I'm, like every week right for the last eight years yeah um i, I, I oh my god sorry, the look on your face i genuinely there. do not know how you do that <laughs> the thing is I, like, tell me. I would die after the first week if i had to publish once a week <laughs> <laughs> how often do you publish maybe every couple of months uh, right. <laughs> and how maybe big, how big are the projects that go into that like how much uh, how much time do you have to dedicate to other stuff well that my, is not my last big. project i put a snake in a hat i that saw was, that that was, a, that was pretty a, hard it's a good hat it's a good I, snake i had to pay a lady to sew a bag into it so that was pretty difficult hold on hold on, hold on. you did not I feel like if you have that time, learning to sew is part of the, no, part well, of the experience. It, why, why do you have your head in your hands like that? Well, because it only costs cost $10. So. <laughs> okay. Then that's I, think, what, I think that... What? Our Second channel. question, why are you only paying someone $10 for that That's work? all she asked for. I actually slipped her a $100 bill. I didn't okay. ask for change. That was <laughs> your filming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> always, 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 like, raise... like. Go go higher when you work on something like this. Because well, it was a storefront. He yeah. like went to a storefront and asked how much it would cost. It cost. was okay. the best alteration store in Tampa. It was a really good job. Too. It was worth more than ten. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It yeah. was very professionally done. All right. And that's, so that's, that's why I haven't made a video in like the last six weeks. Is because you were busy getting something like, so yeah, into yeah, a hat, snake yeah. in a hat. Yeah. I think that we are just bad at making videos. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> that's my my game theory. It's. I mean, you gave up for a while. I <laughs> no, but, but that this is the thing. I never, I, I still, <laughs> he's still was giving up. Working on videos. <laughs> well, I mean, d I saw the video. It was like, yeah. I'm done. And I kind of took that as literal yes. as being done, done. So I well, thought because you I knew more up. people would watch it, and I'd get more ad revenue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Actually, the, right. video's not, the video's not yeah. monetized. I, I, because that, that was the first thing I could think about is if I did monetize the video, which would be, I feel weird. That's immediately what people would say. It's like, oh, you're just, yeah, mm -hmm. you're, you're, yeah. you're, well, you know what? If I'm going to look like a sad man on camera, I'm going to make money <laughs> off it. Screw you guys. <laughs> do, you, do you usually look like a sad man on camera? I got two videos like that. Okay. okay. <laughs> two sad man <laughs> videos. <laughs> and they There's do well. There's a playlist of two videos. Yeah, actually, actually, sad man. 
<laughs> videos of William is sad. So you've got you've got your main channel, William Osman, yes. and then you have William Osman's sad. sad edition. That's, yeah. 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 Uh, but that is, that I, is just that's a hell of a second no, channel I know. that's just <laughs> what's only your sad secret because you do these, oh no like... I've got, so okay last time I was on a podcast was uh, Marcus Brownlee's okay. in, in, uh, in it was lovely had a great day. I thought we were going in to talk about tech news yes. because that's what his podcast is about. Mm. And then it turns out to be an entire interview on me. I'm not ha- I'm not falling for that again. Where oh, okay. <laughs> what what's your take on Caillou Hentai? <laughs> <laughs> I never ever want to hear those words next to each other. That's that's worth Sure. Let's talk about my workflow. <laughs> yes. 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 Yes, we bullied, we bullied Tom Scott into a personal interview. <laughs> How do you do those takes, those long takes where you just like, you don't No, we, we literally, Marquez asked literally the goddamn well, same question. Just, you, yeah, yeah, yeah but you know what I'm doing? Every, t- every time you ask that question, I'm going to tell you to watch a different podcast. Good luck. <laughs> what? What other podcast? So, actually, so, 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 so. Um, this is something, this, this is something we'll I recommend gonna, them. Well, this is something I was actually going to turn back on you because this is something I want to learn. Ah. Uh-huh. I'm bad at improvisation. I'm mm. fine if I have someone to bounce off for a conversation yes. like this. Yeah. Uh, I'm fine. So the the second channel I run. Uh, oh yeah, I also have the second channel. So that's every yes. two weeks on there as well. Um, that is bouncing off other people, and there is a crew kind of prompting. I, mm-hmm. I have a thing too. But if I just have to sit down and deliver, I mean, something like Twitch streaming would terrify me yeah. because you're just on your own, reacting to stuff, improvising with no no safety net. Yeah. I know you folks edit thoroughly, um, but you still quite often are just talking at a camera unscripted. Yeah. And I don't know how you do that without having like 20, 30 takes, just having to watch back your own incompetence. Yes. Well, I say, so what you said is, <laughs> it is 20 or 30 takes where you watch back at your own incompetence. I mean, surely, surely it gets better over time. Like, it right? depends. Because like, I think there's, there's two types of or there's like three types of communication. Like one is hyper improvised where it's like, you sort of have one shot, one opportunity. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Thank, thank you. Eminem. <laughs> yeah. Mom's spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> Was that deliberate or did that just come from the subconscious? Uh, no, I think, I mean, I, I'd say though. <laughs> a little bit of both. Yeah. Uh, and the other is trying to be organic and ad lib, but also trying to be super effective with your communication. So you're trying to be like concise. That's the hardest. Right. The third is narration, where you're just completely delivering the like bare necessity to the audience to help bridge the gap. But you can sort of you can communicate ideas more swiftly because you sort of go to like God mode as a narrator, if that makes any mm. sense. Where it's yeah. like anything the narrator says is taken for granted. Anything that uh, you say kind of live on camera is a little bit more wobbly. It's like you're sort of making yeah. yourself a professional. It, it's very weird. It's like some subconscious stuff going on. And so the ad lib stuff to me is easy because you can just say whatever and you just, if you look like an idiot, you look like an idiot. Mm. Uh, do you find like your speech patterns and voice change with that? Or? Uh, if I'm filming, I pretty much immediately, like I don't know how because I swear a bit in real life. It just, that shuts off. Right. Like I've gotten very good at just completely shutting. I'll like, be a little bit more enthusiastic. So I've heard had people say like, it's kind of like a, a switch flicks. Mm. Um, and so you sort of become this more like hyperbolized version of yourself mm-hmm. that you wouldn't want to be all the time because people would hate you, but it works well on camera because you have to be more assertive and aggressive. Mm. And you know, like, like insulting people is funny on camera. And so it's like being kind of just like saying like filtering less works well. Um, and so it's like it's just it's a combination of like how do you do the the ad lib plus the focused ad lib like the structured ad lib plus the narration and the hardest part for me is like nowadays it's the intro of like how do you concisely mm-hmm. introduce right. an idea without yeah. rambling because on YouTube you have to just say it not as much as TikTok you've got about three yeah. seconds on shorts yeah. to, to get the audience's right. interest for the rest of it but right. yeah like if you don't if you don't get to the point in the first few seconds. Yeah. Yeah, and that and you're really good at that where it's like you you kind of know exactly like you've already got your title to like lead into it and then you're sort of like making that weird like kind of before video cliffhanger hook thingy to like explain the yeah. weird concept that you found. Mm-hmm. Right. I ha- I have to sort of be the introduction into it and be the the layperson that's there for the audience to, right. to go okay, this is the introduction this is it's why like, it's interesting. Why should you care about this? Right. Yeah. And the answer is generally it's not really a reason yeah. to other than it's it's vaguely it's interesting. Just interesting. Yeah. 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 
Whereas you have to be, this is, you have to get over you and your personality and yeah. the project that you are working on here. Right. Um, like you, have to, you have to sell both yourself and the idea. Whereas yeah. I feel like I, I'm lucky, I, I just have to sell the idea. Yeah. I have to sell the idea and not be off-putting. You, you have to sell yeah. the idea and actively, <laughs> actively get be off to room be, for yeah. Well, be I, 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 I think... Uh, I yeah, think. I, in hindsight, I could have phrased that like... No, so see, this is that's the, this perfect. Is the thing. No, yes. That is what makes videos yeah. fun. Right. <laughs> that's the thing. Whereas if I was scripting, I'd have yeah. gone through and like, no, you can't have that because you need to set up two things and then resolve two things. And that's the wrong way around. Yeah. Okay, I'll rewrite that sentence. Right. But, but I also know that if I miss one word... Yeah. If I say one word wrong, I will just have an incredible amount of pedantry coming. Oh, you actually meant that? I'm like, yeah, I, I know I meant that. Yeah. And let's be honest, you know I meant that. Yeah. But the word was wrong. Yeah. And thus, yeah, I, I have to like, script it. I, in, in sort of the, the full, I mean, you just said, I think Alan, Alan and I have probably the most similar video style. In like full improvised mode, if I say something wrong, like what did I, I said something earlier wrong, right? Like it was the lip balm. I said like, lip like a fruit. Oh, oh, I, yeah, I you, you, yeah, limp, limp, limp instead of limp. limp. Yeah. <laughs> and, and like, in if I'm doing a video or on a podcast or something, it's just like, yeah, yeah, oh, right, yeah. yeah, you know, it's almost like yeah. I'll acknowledge it or say it again or be mm -hmm. like, you know, it's so it's so it gets kind of included, yeah. like the the failure to exist as a human being gets included <laughs> in the video, and I, I feel mm. like that's kind of like from the beginning of the channel because I don't like I don't know a lot of people sort of. Uh, will present their content in a way where it's like I'm very smart I did this thing and it's like I just I don't really work like that it's kind of fun to just the pr there's less pressure if you sort of embrace looking incompetent yeah <laughs> I think it I depends like I... on what it is because I was going to comment on what you said for like my main videos that I do you, it's all narration so you can just keep redoing it over and over but on the second channel you don't really I actively don't script anything so it's like even the intro is not scripted. I just keep talking to the camera for like 15 <laughs> minutes and we chop it into something that's usable. And it's bad because sometimes we can't redo the intro. Yeah. So I just, if it's bad, the whole video is bad. Um, <laughs> have, you, but, uh, have you heard of a tool called Descript? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. But have like, you... I, I think we talked about it the other day where like it, it does text. Uh, yeah, edit, yeah, text to voice. Edit, edit video like it's a word process. Yeah, but yeah, okay. depending oh. on the editing style you do, you can, like you said one word you didn't like, I will, in the video sometimes, you do like, uh, it looks like it's a joke. You're like two more minutes on time about editing. But while you do that, just because my lips, <laughs> yes. you don't see it, you can splice in mm -hmm. voiceover. Mm -hmm. And it's like I've had it before where it's like, I will just make the crop a bit smaller. And then as it, I'm talking, it goes down. You just don't see my, my mouth move. Yeah. And like I can change the line. I can splice in words from elsewhere or, or fix the line. So it's like you do still have a lot to... You have the ability to fix, even though it appears that like I mean there is no scripting. You you started doing more improv stuff on the second channel, kind of like putting yeah. and and like that is anytime I think about like any hesitation with making videos or sort of discomfort or like what am I supposed to do for the audience to you know I mean it's like oh we got to get all the views and you got to make sure that it's not going all down. The views. And, um, <laughs> I have I I tell myself I try to convince myself that like I mean I'm, I don't even I'm like I'm pretty much doing exactly what I want to do that I should use YouTube as an opportunity to do things that I want to do, like, like have new experiences or yeah, meet new people. That's, that's, that's and that I think like for me is like the best part of doing something like this. Cause it is real work. A lot of people will criticize, you know, a creator and be like, Oh, you just sit in front of a camera. You and need talk. to get and a real like, job. Yeah. Though. yeah. I have had real jobs. They suck ass compared to YouTube. So and it's not a real job. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's not. There are, there's, there's a question of philosophy right there. I, uh, well, because what is it? A job is a thing that you have to suffer. If you're not suffering, then it's not oh, a I'm job. Oh, I'm suffering. Yeah, if you take <laughs> you're suffering. Everyone here is suffering. You take the job. It's, it's real. It's, it's, real. Real. it's, it's a real so job. real. You remove all the parts of the job and replace them with equally shitty but different parts. At the end, the, the job of Theseus is completely <laughs> composed of new shitty parts. Is it still a job? Is it still the original <laughs> job? Yeah. Uh, I, I love the idea. Uh, the, the UK equivalent of Ship of Theseus, by the way, is Trigger's Broom which is a sitcom reference from, I think, the early 90s. Uh, same gag, like, that, oh, I've had this broom for 25 years. Oh, it's, it's had, you know, 30 new handles, 30 new brushes. Yeah. And it turns out that's the British reference. For, and I just love the idea at the end of WandaVision, that the two, uh, oh, the two visions. Yeah. Yeah. Have you heard of Trigger's Broom? Yeah. Just yeah. sounds better. <laughs> just sounds better. I do like that, though. It's, it's, much, it's like much less epic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a broom. Yeah. <laughs> 
Have you heard of Prometheus's turd? <laughs> <laughs> he kept eating different things every day. <laughs> That's, that is like halfway there. <laughs> and then stole fire from the gods? Yeah. I don't know where you went. <laughs> I might be misremembering this. That's just, that's just a bad night after Dave's hot chicken, you know? That's... Have you heard of Jerry's pile of grapes? <laughs> Every time he ate one grape, he replaced it with a new grape. I, I just, I think that YouTube is kind of like the ideal retirement. <laughs> where you can do things that you want to do but you still have like the like the purpose of the job because you're like i feel like very successful people like ceos you know someone like mark zuckerberg or elon musk like they're, they're built different in a worse way right like there, there's something wrong with their brain because once you accumulate like so much success and money like there's probably an amount of money where you really just you should just quit your job and like i don't know go take pictures of birds or something yeah. and um, so that's that's a question for that. yeah because because you get four people who make stuff for youtube in the room the conversation inevitably turns around how we make stuff for youtube yeah so like the question i wanted to ask is like what do you have in your life other than work and hanging out with friends and family war zone i've played probably over the pandemic i don't i actually don't want to make an estimate but it's it's got to be thousands of hours wow of i do not know i'm assuming video game yeah okay uh, Caillou hentai. Again, the <laughs> no. words keep coming up. And last time, I said I didn't want to hear them again. <laughs> you need to make a threat that if he says it one more time, he'll get well, it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me let me threat, let me add one extra thing, like accepting like media consumption. Okay. So. Okay. Long. <laughs> however, you define media. <laughs> yeah. so, you're, so, so you're asking. He's, like, he's literally trying to yeah. out us as just loser. Yeah. No, no, because yeah. no, because the thing is. I realized a while back that I didn't have anything other than work yeah. and hanging out with friends. Oh, so we're all losers. Well, no, I, I, we're I, together. I, at yeah. Will, I have so many hobbies. No, you don't. <laughs> um, I'm not oh, a loser. <laughs> uh, I, I drink alcohol. Is yeah, that, that's on media. That media? That's on media. I do consume it, but it's not media. I, a, I, uh, does that count as a hobby? That's... I think some people think it does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of those people. I, uh, I have other stuff that I do. Not when I'm working too much. I started, I started shooting a uh, film. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was like a... a so kind of shooting film or shooting a film? Shooting... Uh, Using film. film. Like actual film, film, film photography. Actual film photography, Oh, yeah. wow. Are you, are you doing like full development kit or, or is it just like... No. Okay. Because uh, this is a slippery slope. Yes. I've seen two friends it's go not, down this slope. It's like, not you worth up, it. You end up with your own yes. little dark room. It's oh. not worth it. Um, so I kind of got sick of digital stuff because digital is is it's like i feel like it's like consuming media mm -hmm. has a very similar relationship to shooting digital where it's like there's it's too quick of a turnaround it's too quick mm -hmm. of a reward it's like tiktok is like you know do you watch tiktok at all i'm assuming not <laughs> i yeah. i do not have it installed uh but like i'll ask people like oh can you tell me about a tiktok you saw today and the answer is usually like like it's not even an answer it's just like they're thinking and they're, they're like really they're coming to the conclusion that they don't really recall that anything from TikTok. And that's kind of how I feel about photography when you're doing digital mm. stuff is mm. it's so quick to just take a picture with your phone or take a picture with your camera. So remember, yeah. And then you yeah, go on your phone, you go to Instagram. Thing. It's like they give you thousands of filters to sort of like to artificially damage the picture in the same way. That artificially artifact. damage. Look at this guy. Because well, in film, it's like. You know, I held that opinion for a long time and now I'm, I'm good. I'm good with filters. I'm just. <laughs> no, it's, it's, I'm OK. Like, I don't care. It's just like for me, the idea of artificially introducing artifacts to a photo to make it feel more organic is like kind right. of. It's just sort of like, why not just get a hobby and like <laughs> go get a film camera Touch and like grass. learn, yeah, kind of like actually like, like take or the just long take run. a better photo. Right. <laughs> that helps. Too, no, but it, I don't sometimes. even care. That's a difficult part though. You, you could just buy new tools. You know, also, no, 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 I'm right. saying that right. the people who put like, they crank like the filt like the contrast and all this stuff up because the photo's not good. So you just yeah. crank Digital everything. photos are good. F like digital photography and video is good for work and business, mm. but film is like, to me feels more creative because you add a bunch of restrictions that force you to be mm. more creative. Like you essentially say, I'm going to give myself a challenge. Every time you go to take a photo, there's a challenge. Like you, it's, it's very hard to be good at film photography because there's a bunch of things you have to learn about the camera. Mm -hmm. There's not really like a whole lot of automatic stuff. There's like, a lot I of mean, disappointment. Get, there's a lot of disappointment. <laughs> and it's like, for me, like the medium format camera I have, it's like, it's a weird camera. I bought it, you know, come from Japan because they were more into medium format. So it's a very large piece of film. And it's like, $4 per picture? 
Wow. So the roll of film can be like mm. eight to ten dollars, and that gets me twelve photos on this camera. And then developing that can cost like five bucks. And so you know, each photo is pretty expensive. And so it's like you know, do I want to pull the trigger right now? Do I want to pull the trigger right now? And it, yeah. it almost is like like a little challenge that then two weeks later you get to see did you do a good job or it's like you get to sort of live those yeah. memories again mm. but later right and so it's it, it's kind of i, I don't want to say it was like an f you to all the stuff i do on a daily basis but it felt more like like creative i guess mm -hmm. you know and it was kind of doing the opposite of what i do on a daily are basis. you are you is it one like fixed lens camera or are you now in, so the, I, in the world where you're getting more yeah and more lens I, I can i can change it. lenses lenses yeah. and uh and so it's it's fun to kind of like you know go on ebay and mm -hmm. like buy new things every once in a while i haven't bought anything in a while someone i know bought a tilt shift lens yes like actual yes. proper and i cannot like he showed me all the bits mm -hmm. and i just could well, not figure out what, is what was going on. So lens. a tilt shift lens is like, so the, the first cameras that were ever invented essentially were what we would call a tilt shift lens because they were sort of not built how today's cameras were built. They're built very differently where it's like you, in order to focus, you have to move the lens away and closer. And inherently that the, the mechanisms were built more like, um, like an optical table here, you know, where you've got all your adjustments and you can like mm. align stuff. And that let you do all sorts of weird stuff where you could like rotate the lens. And what that would do uh, when you rotate it is it takes like the focal plane and it shifts it and so you can get a focal plane that instead of being like flat to the camera it's like diagonal and so, so if, you, if you've seen that instagram filter where it's like it's called tilt shift and it just yeah. specifically small, right? blurs yes. bits to make it look small that, yeah. ah. so that is a physical thing you do with the lens yeah huh. you, but you, you can do crazy stuff shift. where you can you can shoot your focal plane between like so if the camera is like over there you could do a tilt shift in a way where the focal plane even though the camera's over there, will actually pass through the I don't know why I looked over that. Well, just <laughs> so it's like normally, like for us to be in focus, the camera would have to be like perpendicular or like like kind of planar to us, like parallel. Oh, okay. But a tilt shift mm. would let you put the camera over there and like you could almost like you could, your focus could shoot straight through the shot. Like very mm. bizarre. Mm -hmm. And they, they do it with um, building photography too. So you can, you can point up at the building, but you can shift. And so you can correct for the the parallax. Oh wow! It's, okay. So instead of like essentially, huh. yeah, it's it's very it's very the, the optics of it just was far yeah. beyond me. Just trying to trying to understand how these little corrections that were being made. I, it's more intuition. Like I think yeah. you get your hands on one and you start playing with it. But the problem is that like the lenses are like five grand for or the new ones. I think yeah. can be even more expensive. You can get old ones for mm. like couple thousand dollars but it's also still you just get a shittier lens because there's usually no autofocus there's mm -hmm. oh, it's a fixed lens it's like mm. but like that's something that i've always wanted to do is yeah. play with a tilt shift lens because it's just it's something new and different and i don't know that's that's what i've done i think that, that's probably the biggest hobby um that's a good one that's like a real actual hobby yeah because you're not immediately monetizing that mm -hmm. you're not turning that into <laughs> yeah. content that is just a, actually, that's not a, yet. That's that's not a yet. that's a better way of phrasing it. Like, what is in your life that is not creating or consuming yeah. content? That's yeah. a that's a better way of phrasing it. Yep, I think I think that's a good. Hmm. I really want to make my own multi tool. I haven't done you it done yet, it? though. Not <laughs> yet. Thought about I, it. I thought but, about but it. But Alan, would you make a video on it? No, no. Okay. Because you wouldn't. That would be a really bad video. It's like that's that's the, I want that's to make, the only reason why. I want to make a multi tool that I can take on an airplane. It is geared more towards like electrical engineering work. I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, but, that's, that's not a bad video idea. I will say no, that. It's, no, it's no. I have a I have a TSA idea. approved multi tool. Uh, they just haven't found it yet. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's not, it's not approved. Dude, it's, it's gone, through, it's it's gone through TSA, like, at this point, probably, like, two dozen times. I think I'm, it's because it's the one that you're, uh, it folds into, like, a yeah, little circle, it looks right? Like a I think, circle, I think yeah. it would just look like a medallion. I mean, the, the, or knife, the knife, you could do more damage with a pencil than the knife that comes on this thing. The, <laughs> the new ones at Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam, you don't have to take anything out your bag. It does a full yeah. 3D it's a, it's color. A, it's actually the yeah. analogic. Yeah, the, the analogic, analogic yeah. machine. <laughs> it yeah. is. That's the actual name of the. I think they pronounce it a little different. Yeah, yeah. But probably, it's spelled probably. analog. <laughs> it is. And it's just. It's just. It's like bizarre to me that it is. At, when you look it up, it costs the same as an actual medical CT scanner because it is. It's the same yeah. company that makes actual medical oh, right. CT okay. scanners. Oh right. Okay. It was more expensive actually. A, a, you could get a lower end medical one. It's just not brand analogic one. brand. Yes. It's not analog. You could put your own sticker on it though. But <laughs> it was just sort of this realization that it's like you know the the TSA has a federal budget. It's you know close to ten billion dollars a year next year, and like that is a a government subsidized CT scan 
of luggage. Mm -hmm. And yes. you would not be able to get one of those for your body unless you went to the airport and like jumped into the machine. hundred <laughs> percent. You could send someone's ass through one of those. Yeah, could you not? And just you would like... come out with a medical grade CT scan. I guarantee it. Can you just, just lie down on yeah, the, the belt? Yeah, I was like, hey, could you just do me a favor? I, like, I have a really weird feeling in, in my back here. Could I just go through? You have a friend at the TSA. He just It's just, but it's like a weird, bizarre kind of like, you know, why is this thing being paid for? And it's like essentially identical to this other thing. But we are not going to pay for this. Well, I, I, I mean, this goes into. I, I asked you all to lateral flow before we mm -hmm. did this to like do a do a COVID yeah. test, mm -hmm. which I kind of assume because it's that's just not a big deal in the UK because the tests are about a buck or two bucks right. a piece. They're more. They're like five dollars. No, no, ten dollars here. Yeah, I, I got two I, for five. I, right. I was two for ten. <laughs> do, do you have like a? a <laughs> you have like a discount medical supplies store you're going to? No, or it was just like CVS. <laughs> oh, okay. Some guy in an alleyway. Yeah. <laughs> Because I'm starting to run out of, of the, the pack I, I brought with me. I was just like, I oh, I'll go to CVS though. and pick it up. I'm sorry, how much? Yeah, I was... Yeah, I back was... in Canada, it was like a five for five. No, yeah. everyone can get yeah. one free. We were in Florida. I think month. we spent... Each of us spent like forty dollars, and we <laughs> we went to go get a um, the, the PCR. The PCR, yeah. and they were like, yeah, it's going to be like 180 bucks. Yeah. And we were like... Yeah. Well, that was in Florida? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, and so we just we just did the route, and we we're just like like I, I mean, how, I honestly they were like I mean, how hard am I supposed to try? Like it's almost like no one's trying to work with me here. I am. Um, I really am. Trying. <laughs> I lie. Um, uh, and there are folks who are on full uh, productions, like big union productions yeah. uh, in LA that I haven't been able to meet up with because they don't want to take the risk. Yeah. Mm. And they're like, no, we. If we have to be so yeah. so careful. Like they just won't the whole with production anybody. Yeah, I mean, I uh, well, they like within unless, the within yeah. the circle, maybe outdoors, everything mm. like that. But it's like this was not a necessary meeting. It was not a right. family meeting. So like next time, it's right. not like we had to meet up for anything. So it was yeah. An yeah, another time. Yeah. Did you hear about uh, uh, this? Is a second-hand rumor, by the way. I do. Ooh, <laughs> with the, uh, with the caveat, with the caveat, this is this just something is, I was told, uh, which is thankfully with Tom not Scott. in context. Oh, with Tom Scott. No, it was no, um, tea oh, with Tom tea, Scott. Tea, tea, the, tea the Game of Tom Thrones Scott. prequel yeah. had an entire shadow crew. Like they had every department had a backup on retainer no being, being way. paid less. So if visual effects had a COVID outbreak, they just cycle. They would all quarantine out. And the new one oh, who had been isolating together God, on cool. half pay would now get full pay or whatever it was right. and come in. And that was the requirement. That That's was insane. what they had to do. I wish we had that kind of budget for a YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> to have so, an entire so second on half shadow, pay, William. Just, well, I don't know if it was half, half, but like, honestly, they got a good deal. They never had to, like, it, it was basically, yep, you need, well, you need to isolate. They were being paid for oh, staying in like accommodation as a group. Okay, but okay, not okay. actually having to do any work. Just keep up with what's going on. Be ready to step in. I mean, for a, at a certain point, I think that makes sense. I was on a television set like a few months ago, and we did have one of the hosts get COVID, and the entire thing had to be shut down for like right. 10 days, which in production yeah. is bad. like, <laughs> yeah, especially not even just from a financial perspective, like everyone there is on contract. So like their dates are up and they kind right. of always have to be working. Yeah. So once we blew past the original like end of filming day, like they had to just find new people to like replace like the mm. sound people or the PAs because they had to leave to go into other jobs. Which means had... all the institutional knowledge mm. is gone and you yeah. have to retrain. Yeah. So it is like it is such a mess to like have that happen. And it's always a risk for these yeah. things. So yeah. what, are you, what are your uh, non-media hobbies that you've done over? I mean, these days, <laughs> roller coasters at the minute. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't have much. And then uh, about three, four weeks ago, I, I got over my phobia of roller coasters. That was content. Really? We did do that for a video. Yeah, I mean, um, that's... yeah but you also get to ride a roller coaster. I, I think they're like... I, like, I, I had a, a, I had a full-on phobia. Really? Full-on... Um, I. I'd, I'd done all the compotes. Like, by this point, I've done, like, high G and zero yeah. G and inversions. Like, I know I... That's way I, worse. I know I... I yeah. You'd, you'd think, but there is something about... The phobia is very specifically about <laughs> you locked get, like, in, lo Yeah, you get... No uh, control. Like, the click, click, click... What about the statistics? Oh, no, again... Even that, nothing else. It's a else. phobia. Yeah, it's irrational. an irrational fear. Yeah. Um, There's some value so, for it, I think. He, he would be... You'd prefer to be on a roller coaster where you weren't strapped in? <laughs> I would prefer to be on a roller coaster with an e-stop button. <laughs> Which which does I would time for the top of the yeah, just every time. So there's a, there's yeah. a thing called a thing called a Robo Coaster. There's a couple in a couple still running in Legoland in Denmark. I think there might be one in Legoland in in the US. Yeah. Uh, which is just 
a robot arm, a Kuka robot arm mm. with two seats on the end. Yes. And like some of them are themed. Are, are they planted? Just, this is shit. So the, there, was, there was one at Disney World for a while. So uh, they're just planted there. to the ground. They're just planted in the ground. Yeah. And some of them bother to theme it, and some of them is like, it's a robot arm with two seats in it. Do you want to ride? But because it's a robot arm, <laughs> it's got an e-stop button. Like if it turns yeah. out, you, and that sort of thing, I'd be fine with. Right. Something with a pilot. Yeah, it's a plane. If this is unpleasant, I can say, can we just stop for a bit and right. we'll be in level flight. Roller coaster, you don't get that. No. Uh, you just gotta close your eyes and know it'll end soon. Yeah. <laughs> that was like, yeah. Me and Nigel went on this thing called the what the Sky Flyer oh, or whatever. No. And it's the thing. I love where, that. You, know, you you did like the worst possible. <laughs> you thing. sit in essentially like a plastic chair with like one little flimsy like. Oh, so ch- with the chains. Bar- yeah. That's a Star Flyer. Yeah. Star Flyer. Those Star are great. Flyer. Those are fine. What? It doesn't no. drop. It they doesn't did it, drop. They did it in like Vegas. It was the, the, was the one in Orlando that goes like. Yeah, yeah. It's like four hundred feet. Or we something. go Orlando. very like we went up so high. Oh my and god, that was Orlando. Why oh, it was fe- it yeah. It fe- yeah, what? What is actually fair? Oh but, my god. Like, what? But, it's, it feels sketchy as hell, but like it's it's. No, it was. Be- I, I was laughing. I, had, and I like I yeah, because shake we were up. Like... Nigel started laughing. and went. <laughs> it doesn't feel oh, real. Yeah. I was like, because you're dissociating right I now. Think, your mind I think, is dissociating I think, your body, Nigel. There's a very clear thing that you're missing. It's the institution that is operating the ride. <laughs> you were doing it at an accessory park to Disney in Orlando. <laughs> there is there is one of those star flyers in a little family park in Germany, uh, okay. and it's not a big park. They don't have any. any but it's inside an old, never used nuclear power plant. <laughs> And the star flyer is inside a cooling tower. That's pretty cool. So, like, you get the echoes inside the cooling yeah. tower, and then it just pops out the top, so you can see the view. And it's, that's it's lovely. Amazing. If, you, <laughs> really if it nice. breaks, you're just gonna smash into the wall. Yeah. <laughs> so that's lovely. That's fine. But, but so you're talking specifically like it's the like, drop. It's a specific. Oh my god! Over the. Ah, oh, now we're plunging. That is. And I it's know a, what you mean. I know what you it's mean. It's a specific. It's that stomach drop. Everything tensing up. Oh, but feeling. you like it now. I, I don't feel it now. Because mm. it turns out that's fear. Mm. That's what I discovered on like the on the on the second roller coaster was that that that, that feeling you get when you get surprised by a, a going over a hill in a car. Right. That yes. kind of te- everything tenses up. Yeah. That's fear. That is. I don't know whether it's a, you're, a physical reaction triggered by your brain being surprised. Yeah. But if you're not surprised by it, if you just kind of okay, this Embrace is what we're doing it, now. Sorry. You don't feel that. That yeah. unpleasant feeling, the, the thing I was afraid of, the thing I had a full on phobia of. Is it like an adrenaline dump or something? Or like a I com- don't know. I, I, like I couldn't tell you what. It's probably the, like a <clears throat> vagus nerve, like stomach yeah. brain connection what, that happens. Whatever with it the drop. is, if you're expecting it or just happy that it's going to happen, that feel. So anyone who's always loved roller coasters may never have felt that on them and won't understand anything about it. But if, if you know the feeling that you mean. But well, like, I went on a roller coaster. I used to, I had it all the time. I, yeah. I went on roller coasters and I think you stop. Yeah, so it turns out that's just fear, and now that thing that I'm afraid of has mm. gone. Uh, yeah, I've got a Six Flags annual pass now. I really? Been, so you, now you have to catch up on like all the flags. years. Of well, ago. yes, but I'm also now in my late thirties, so I also get neck and back pain after like yes. the fourth roller coaster. Like I should have got over this yeah. years. I, I have had years where I could have got I, over this. I used I, to uh, love roller coasters as a yeah. kid, and I think like like the taller I got through puberty, the worse it got. Mm. Why? I don't know. I just it would be like like you, maybe you're just you move more and so you end up like oh I like I like that just but, but you're like, how tall, you're shorter than me you're how tall are you I'm like six four. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I think I think once you he's pass, telling the truth that's how just well, uh, just a setup straight yeah, yeah. yeah just I just right. always slouch yeah yeah <laughs> I just like I remember uh have you been to Six Flags Magic Mountain yes okay because yeah. that's like I think th- like three times in the last couple of weeks is it still like the capital like or they still have more co- okay. I, I i'm starting to like have opinions on roller coasters yeah. there's some now. good there's some good <laughs> shit there from like yeah i don't know if they've added much since they have they have the world's first modern looping coaster which one so that? it's the um we should it's, go. it's the i can't remember the name of it it's called something classic is it, was it Revolution? Yes, Revolution yeah, Classic. That, Revolution, so they rebuilt it or something? Because that um, was originally the first looping coaster, I think. Yeah, it's what still... What do you mean, first looping? Like it just, so, it, it was the first one that did a full mm, loop. Yeah, well, it's the first modern one, because people tried it. I think they rebuilt it then. Yeah, yeah well, people tried it in like, the 1920s, yeah. and it turns out if you just build a circular loop, uh, it'll try and break people's necks. You have to have, <laughs> have like a certain mathematical path that I don't yeah. have the math to understand. It's like a weird um, acceleration But it's the curve. first one. And it's like you go over the top, and there's this sign that says "Keep head back against headrest." I'm like, I am gonna obey that sign. <laughs> and it's just this 
like it's not like a, a modern one where it's just it's an unexpected loop you just yeah. get put into it. It's like oh no, this is a lot. You're just going downhill. You got the loops ahead. It's a good five yeah. six seconds before. Oh god, okay, yeah. here we go. <laughs> I feel zero like, G. Oh, how, oh, here we go, and we're out. How does that work from a physics perspective? Because I'm assuming that it's like the the force vector changes and then you also have to include gravity so if you do like a consistent acceleration you're going to have it's going to be it's going to be when you get to the top you're going to be pushing against but also pulling down if they get it right at the top you should be in like a zero g okay. stall oh, maybe hang okay. a little upside down so full throttle at magic mountain which is the one that just you accelerate naught to 70 and then go into a loop right away right they weigh the train just before it sets off hmm. to give it exactly the right amount of thrust so it, you just kind of oh, interesting. hang mm. at the top of the loop for two seconds and then you're back out. So it's like this centripetal yeah, acceleration like is matching gravity at that point. Yeah. Yes. So or so just one down. full throttle, gravity just overcomes it so you feel just like you're floating out your seat. <laughs> yeah. okay, so it's like you just have a tad bit and of... And then we're back in. That's yeah. awesome. So Where, if, there's a, if there's a malfunction in the scale, then... Yeah, you're just going to... Well, get, so this is the clever bit. Um, when you, the last element on full throttle, you go over a top hat. Yeah. It's called, and you go down. But then the station is like right there. It's just, it's there. So just if the the, I was like, if the brakes don't work on this, yeah. how on earth does that work? It's, it's eddy current braking. There's, there's magnets uh, in, the, in the car, and that's just like a lump of iron, I assume, on yeah. the track. So it doesn't matter, like... Whatever speed you're coming down that, yeah. you will be going at a safe speed out of it just cool. because physics. It's probably like a very nice like it's, acceleration profile There's a lot well. of really, really clever mm. stuff. And so as someone who likes infrastructure, yeah. uh, it turns out that, uh, that roller coaster nerds are like train nerds. Or like any kind of transport nerds. Yeah, there's, like, there's, a, there's, there's a, a couple there's a of infrastructures that, that you don't could want put to go in a bucket. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but it means that I now go, oh, okay, oh, that's what they've done there. Oh, that's really clever. Yeah. Or, or also... Oh my god, I'm never going on that ride again, or I know I'm not going on that ride yeah. because I've been on one of those manufacturers elsewhere and it gave me a headache. Right. Like, you, you, turns out you learn this stuff, and then you get really enthused, you get, yeah. uh, enthusiastic about it to other people. Right. That's cool. You, there, there's a uh, roller coaster in Japan. I think it's called the Dodo Do Ronpa, mm. and it has the fastest acceleration in the world. Yes, I think that might be. I think full throttle maybe where I got the neck pain. I think I might have got like a little bit of whiplash yeah. on that. So that's probably not for me. That's it's you briefly you will act. You do actually accelerate faster than an astronaut going up on a space shuttle. Very briefly. <sighs> That'd be yeah. cool. It's literally, it's, just, it's it. like, it's literally just a straight line up. That's all. There's not like a whole lot of crazy stuff after that. Yeah. The main attraction is just like the acceleration. Oh, so the the ones I tend to like are the ones that do interesting stuff. So you like okay. the, oh, okay, yeah. okay, so you, okay. Yeah, so then, uh, what's, what's the one in the bottom corner by the parking lot at Magic Mountain? Scream. Scream. So I say yeah. you probably like Scream. That, yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's a smooth ride. Mm -hmm. There's lots does of cool interesting turns. Stuff. And, yeah. yeah. I see, I see. Because there's like Goliath, like I, I have pretty low blood pressure, and Goliath, uh, yeah. like I, my, I will start to that actually helix see at the spots. End. Yes, like I, it, I got that. Because in Montreal we have the Goliath. It goes up and down. Or what does mm, yours do? I don't know. It sort it's of does all the things. Colossal. <laughs> yeah. Really fast on the downhill, but there is a helix at the end just, of it. It gets tighter. That is just and tighter, 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 tighter and you like. Oh, um, it's very different. Though. There's a similar one at uh, Nitro at Six Flags in New Jersey. Um, which just, it's lovely, big hill, lots of lights, lovely. And then it just puts you in one really brutal helix uh, near the end. Like, just, and I actually had to do, like, do a G-string yeah. maneuver oh, yeah. <laughs> to stop myself getting gray out. Because I, I found out, I passed Did out at three points. Did you say G-string maneuver? G-strain. Oh. Very different. G-string maneuver. maneuver. Thank you for calling me <laughs> that. Please I know, teach me. Teach I know me automated captions would get that wrong. G-strain. <laughs> it's, um, you have to stop all the blood going out of your head. So you have to yeah. tighten all the muscles. You have basically... Yeah. Breathe out with that, or breathe. I can't remember exactly how to do it. You have to look it up. But it's sort of, <laughs> and it's to stop all the blood dropping out. Your you can do the yeah. same thing with the G string, actually. You just <laughs> pull it really tight. <laughs> your, your body will naturally tense yeah. up. Because I got to go on a centrifuge once. I got to go on a proper like mm. training centrifuge. You make I, it sound like an opportunity. I passed out at three point six <laughs> yeah. G's sustained. Oh, that's not that much. It's not now. In the video, it looks like I did it on the yeah. first time. That was actually the third run. Okay. So you're like, already having a bad time. I was already Ooh. like. I was like, do you want to try and push it higher? I don't know how much I've got left in, in yeah. me. And the, the medical guy was like, just do 3.6 one more time. And like, I mean, lights it's not, out. It's not that bad, right? Like, no, as long as they immediately stop it. Yeah. Which they did, of course. Right. Um, like, a roller coaster is not going to cause... It, it, anyone who 
is going to have that problem on a roller coaster. It's not going to get on a roller Just coaster. Just like a little brown out, temporary mm. outage. <laughs> Honestly, it felt... I, I didn't feel it at the time. Yeah. Uh, like, this, for the centrifuge, as far as I knew, I'd been conscious throughout. Mm. Huh. That, uh, I was saying some words, and then the world just went really a bit wobbly and fuzzy for a second. I'm like, oh, we've stopped. Did something go wrong? I'm like, yeah, you play it back. There is for lights out and convulsions on the way back up. Ooh. Wow. Like, it was... Wow. Oh, but in my head, it's a continuous line. Right, right. Get a hard reset on your brain. <laughs> Everything That's works bizarre. smoother. It afterwards. was full like Windows startup <laughs> <Yeah>. sound. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it fixes all sorts of things, though. <laughs> but if you want to do, if you want to do something like that, Mission Space at Epcot is a centrifuge. Yeah, I think I've been on that. It's yeah. very convincing. Yeah, that's because it's it's literally giving you proper G-force. You're yeah. in a centrifuge spinning. Man, I wish I wish there were like more smooth ones that didn't bang my head around so much. Like I definitely oh, the, think the taller the you ones. are. You want coasters made by B and M? I have opinions on this now. You okay. want? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. You want? You want steel coasters made by mm. them, and nothing wooden, and nothing yes. made by Aerodynamics. Okay. Like they, they they have reputations now, and from oh. from what I've seen from the from the coasters I've been on in the last few weeks. Yeah, they they deserve reputations. It's coasters. Coasters are such a weird thing because yeah. each one is like different, and so they have I think some general consistencies between them. But it's like, how do you run a business where each product you make literally has to be unique because that's no, why people no, are they're paying. not. But they're kind of they, 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 some of them are. Yeah, but for parks that aren't like Six Flags, then they buy like an off the shelf. It's an off the shelf design. Yeah. There's a catalog for it. So mm. Scream is just a mirror image of one at Six Flags New England. Ah. Um, if you've ever been on one that uh, pulls you up so you can see the drop, sends you through the circuit, then pulls you up and sends you back through backwards. Yeah, I think they call it Deja Vu at Six Flags. Yep, uh, mm. or there's Boomerang. It's just called a Boomerang. Right. There's like 40 of them in the world. They're an mm. off-the-shelf ride that a park can just oh. buy. And if the park closes down, they can get taken apart right. and shipped off somewhere else. So yeah, like there's ones like Universal and Disney will obviously custom build everything. That's right. What they do, but like Six Flags Scream is just an off the shelf. That's interesting. So they, they probably have some unique ones. It's all like just marketing at that yeah. point, right? Of yeah. Like oh, and yeah. And if they're going for highest, fastest, like yeah. Six Flags has a huge budget, they can do that. Right. The smaller parks may just be buying them off the shelf. We talked about this in a podcast a while ago, and, and someone found some of the clips, but I was in uh, an extra in a Magic Mountain commercial years no ago. No kidding! And they, they didn't use any of... Or, or I never <laughs> saw it, or the video just never was online. But they... Uh, we I think we did, like, two of them. And because we, like they had to hire so many, like, SAG union extras, yep. uh, after that, they could just go on Facebook. And so I was like... I followed them on Facebook, and they were, like, giving free tickets. Sorry, I was imagining you were, like, six, seven years old at this point. I don't know why. No. No, I, I, would, I, I would have been like 19. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. You're still a baby. Yeah, I don't know why yeah. I thought he was. Did anyone else get that off what, how he described that? Or was that? I was just assuming you That would have been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I, I'm like, the old man in the, the Six Flags <laughs> Oh, the, the, the dancing old man. <laughs> but yeah, I used it to, says something about how pervasive American culture is yeah. that I get that reference, and we don't have Six Flags. <laughs> Our marketing is good. I mean, you, you have just summed up the United States yeah. of America, right? It's just a big marketing machine. Right. I, I used to be so, like, enthusiastic about it. And I think that, like, the instant my head started Wait, hurting... Wait, like Six Flags the, Roller Coasters of the yeah, United six, States? Uh, six, well, both. <laughs> uh, six Flags Roller Coasters, mostly, though. And just Roller Coasters in general. Like, I, I really wanted to go to all the different Six Flags. And we were just in... Uh, where's the one in Texas, San Antonio? Oh, I don't know that where one. Where were we? I don't remember where we were. Um, and we were right next to another one. And it's just like... I, it, that my sort of excitement for it has has sort of dwindled, and I think it's just purely because the taller I got, or like the more grown up I got, the more it hurt every single time I got off one of them. It was just like my head hurts. Why did I do that? This I, never, is, I never felt any pain from them. <laughs> no, Nigel, you're an entire season of House though, walking around <laughs> on the the, yeah, the, the, the weakest legs I've ever seen. An, uh, uh, also, <laughs> I, I'm I'm suspecting you, <laughs> that took me a second. Sorry, mm -hmm. um, I'm suspecting. You are you are not yet in in like thirties like thirties. I'm thirty. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you you got a few years of roller coasters left. Enjoy it before your body. Gets When's up. the last time you've been on a roller coaster? It's gonna be like years ago. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. You're going to Six Flags and you're gonna come off aching. Yeah. That's that's fine. We're gonna take you. I think Ninja was the one that banged my head up. It's, does it, is that one still exist? It's like the oh like yeah, it's the, you, yeah. It's mm. it's it's rattling. That one's yeah. like yeah. The only one that I went on in Montreal is the one where 
there's like they put it really close to your ears. Oh and, yeah. But it's yeah. a violent one. It yeah, shakes no, you. You come off with earaches. No. Mm. I'm assuming you've seen the the sui- suicide coaster, the one with the loops that continuously accelerate. Like yes. They, mm. they, the, they the, like the keep in theory. Yeah. I love that one guy wrote about this and everyone like yeah sure let's talk about it like no let's it's not build a practical it. idea. It's, wait are you. No, that's oh, okay. building this. All right. I'm more interested in the Alan, fact that Alan can test it. Theoretically, buy an off-the-shelf roller coaster. I think that'd be pretty. I mean, cool you'll need a few it. million, but it can be done. Oh, a few million and some land, probably. Well, anyway, well, you can uh, also build pa- your own Patreon. Like, the people, safety third Patreon. There's a there's uh, a backyard <laughs> roller coaster culture. There's like half a dozen, maybe a dozen people well, in the seen US. I've that before. Yeah, they just build, build their, their own. own. Yes, it, it can be done. That would be fun. I just, Good luck. I love the idea of doing that. It just feels like such a time sink like it would take you so long what's a build a roller coaster so even a really shitty roller coaster that lasts that five seconds like <laughs> even even building like a section of track would take you like a week like you have to cut the tube sections you potentially have to like bend it appropriately then it's all got to be aligned like and you assume you it's not just gonna crumble in your mind <laughs> i know i think i think you could do it pretty well i think it'd actually be pretty easy to build a halfway decent roller coaster in your backyard but like a tiny scale one. i mean mm-hmm. you could i was gonna say uh, you could outsource it because yeah. for 150 bucks you can just go to Six Flags for the year, yeah. and <laughs> the, you, you no, open up. No, you open no. up the coast a backyard. Is you have a backyard amusement park, and you sell tickets. And when people show it's up, it's just a shuttle to... that goes to yeah, Six Flags, right? and the tickets are ten dollars more yeah, than Six Flags. That's a great plan. <laughs> well, what are they gonna do? That's... Sue me? <laughs> Said man who was sued. That's a theme park. Actually, it would be really easy to make a suicide coaster in your backyard, though. That's the easiest. I one. feel like you have a this different a definition with a gun of, really, at it. <laughs> of really easy than I do. Like, <laughs> like, oh, there's the complicated one with the loops, and then there's the one where it's just as soon as you sit down, a gun behind you pulls the trigger. <laughs> it's like a Futurama bit. Yeah. Like, have you ever been in? I do, sorry, I, I can do that right now. It's going to involve this sofa and <laughs> that balcony. Yeah. So, how far down does that go? Two Tom, stories. Tom's got suicide. I think. I think one. Sit here. <laughs> Shut. Yeah. That's it. One story is fine. Twenty bucks. You, just, you gotta go head first. <laughs> you have to still have the uh, the photos at the end. Like oh. the one that takes a picture right before you hit the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Who's gonna buy it? Oh, the coaster. No, the the photo. Oh, the- <laughs> It's a, you have to pre-buy it. You're like in the line. You have to decide to buy the picture right then and there. Do you want to upgrade to an annual pass? No, not really. I mean, it can be used for your funeral, right? Yeah. <laughs> I got to ride in a Model S Plaid, which is the new... Uh, oh, yeah. The the crazy acceleration. Yeah. One. It's not the Roadster, but it's I think it's like... How fast? It's like two point something. It's like... Yeah, it's- it, it was approaching horrible. The feeling, like you could feel your, like you could you could start to feel things, like kind of entering roller coaster territory where your mm. eyes just feel weird. You can kind of start to feel like a little bit of that, um, where you kind of your soul is sort of being yeah. distracted yeah. a little bit. Uh, and I was thinking to myself, were you driving or were you the passenger? I was a passenger. Okay. Um, there, there is no reason, there's no reason to buy this car. And if you ever use this feature, cause first of all, it takes like 20 to 30 minutes to heat the, cause it has like, it heats the batteries up, yeah. keeps them warm. Mm. It, and nobody would want to ride with you. Like it, it genuinely sucks. There is you quite a, all the time, a yeah. valid argument. I'm not sure if I agree with it, that all cars should just be limited to like 80 miles an hour or maybe 85. Yeah. Mm. Because the, the highest speed limit in the UK is 70. The highest speed limit in the US is 80. Yeah. Arguably, you should not be able to go faster than that. Right. No, but there's... Because I always talk about there's never an acceleration limit, right? Which is... So, the, which is I looked this up. There is. Like, there is? But it's not acceleration. It's it's uh, vague. There's like a vague catch-all like called... Driving yeah, it's exhibition of speed. Uh, oh, yeah. wow, that's cool. And it yeah. has to do with... It's very weird, though, because it can kind of talk about like showing off. Like, that's the exhibition part the, of The it. UK problem is driving without due care and attention. Yeah. that's mm. It's the catch-all... Look, that mm. was... Yes. That was clearly dangerous. Ours right. sounds we, cooler. It's yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's I mean, again, good at marketing. Um, <laughs> you would say, you would say. But yeah, it's it's the catch-all of no. There is not a specific law that outlaws what you did, but there's no way yeah. you were driving with due care and attention when you just decided to burn out across a car park. The thing, the thing with the the plaid <clears throat> though is it doesn't burn out. 
Mm. So, and also, car park wouldn't count because it's not a public road, so never mind. But, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, same yeah. idea. Like, if you were at a stoplight and you accelerate zero to speed limit, 40 miles an hour, mm -hmm. and you do it in a second and a half, yeah. and the tires don't make a single peep. It was, it was uh, I definitely think, pushing the line, though, with the plaid. Like... That was the point where it's it's beyond just being useful of like being able to sort of like have control of like what lane you need to be in like if you want to get in front of people. So there are moments when that could come in handy. Yeah. It is and it, it's helpful too because I think what do they say statistically like a, like driving faster is safer than driving slow. I mean obviously not speeding. Because oh you get off the road faster. Yes, like being able yeah. being able to do what you need to do <laughs> is the safest way to drive. Right. Because I I mean I was in traffic on the one ten yesterday. Yeah. And I just there's traffic ahead. I brake, mm -hmm. I do the rear view mirror check, and they're not braking behind me, and I can see they're not braking, hazard lights, and yeah. there's, n yeah. there's nothing I can do about this. If I were in electric, and if I, I could have gone, mm, all yeah. right, on the shoulder. Yep, gotten out really but, quick, But like, I, yeah. I just, and there was just some very heavy braking when they saw the hazard yeah. lights, and they just managed it in time. And it's like, like, you just accept death, basically. <laughs> oh, but I, I with, with a car that is not a terrible rental, I could have, could have done that. Yeah. So there's there's certainly an argument for acceleration. Mm. Is there an argument that you really shouldn't be able to go faster than eighty five? I don't know. Is that didn't Elon say that there was going to be a like a model Tesla that was going to have like cold gas thrusters at some the point? Roadster, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, yes, yeah. but there are many claims that have been and made over the yeah. years. <laughs> that's that's like a far. Like we had self driving like four or five years ago, apparently, and oh yeah, it works know. perfectly, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, that's, a, that's <laughs> flawless. Like the car I rented, which is very definitely not a Tesla and not very good, still has a button that does lane follow and adaptive cruise, and that's really all you need. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I've I've experienced the the self driving, yeah. and it's um, it's very impressive. Okay, it's and also to, presumably <laughs> sometimes un, presumably impressive. until it isn't. At which point it is very rapidly not impressive. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but. When it works, it's very impressive. You slowly start to realize, though, like, there's a lot of edge cases. <laughs> mm. And a lot of decisions that, unless you have some true form of, like, artificial intelligence making decisions, I think is almost going to be borderline impossible. Yeah. Uh, all right. That's... Uh that's the episode. Thank you very much, Tom <laughs> Scott. Oh, wow. We're, Sorry. We're being, I, we're I being didn't know followed. if you had a content plan there. Try, try and wrap it we're, up with something else. No. Well, thank you for having me on. Yeah, that was, go, that was lovely. Let's go get lunch. You like Thai food? Sure. Is that the end?